Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the feast of the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. We pray that within the family, parents, children, may together bring each other closer to God, closer to holiness. And so, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these mysteries, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Papuri sa Dios sa kaitaasan.
Let us pray. O God, who were pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity. And so, in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the first book of Samuel. In those days, Hannah conceived and at the end of her term bore a son, whom she called Samuel, since she had asked the Lord for him. The next time her husband Elkanah was going up with the rest of his household to offer the customary sacrifice to the Lord and to fulfill his vows, Hannah did not go, explaining to her husband, Once the child is weaned, I will take him to appear before the Lord and to remain there forever. I will offer him as a perpetual Nazirite. Once Samuel was weaned, Hannah brought him up with her, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour, and a skin of wine, and presented him at the temple of the Lord in Shiloh. After the boy's father had sacrificed the young bull, Hannah, his mother, approached Eli and said, Pardon, my Lord, as you leave, my Lord. I am the woman who stood near you here, praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord granted my request. Now I, in turn, give him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be dedicated to the Lord. Hannah left Samuel there. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are they who dwell in your house, O Lord. Blessed are they who dwell in your house, O Lord. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul yearns and pines for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Blessed are they who dwell in your house, O Lord. Happy are they who dwell in your house. Continually they praise you. Happy the men whose strength you are. Their hearts are set upon the pilgrimage. Blessed are they who dwell in your house, O Lord. O Lord of hosts, hear our prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. O God, behold our shield, and look upon the face of your anointed. Blessed are they who dwell in your house, O Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. And so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God and receive from Him whatever we ask, because we keep His commandments and do what pleases Him. And His commandment is this, we should believe in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another 
just as he commanded us. Those who keep his commandments remain in him, and he in them. And the way we know that he remains in us is from the spirit he gave us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all stand. Open our hearts, O Lord, to listen to the words of your Son. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Each year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to festival custom. After they had completed its days, as they were returning, the boy Jesus remained behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Thinking that he was in the caravan, they journeyed for a day and looked for him among their relatives and acquaintances. But not finding him, they returned to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions, and all who heard him were astounded at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been looking for you with great anxiety. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. He went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus advanced in wisdom and age and favor before God and man. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, as we continue the joyful celebration of Christmas, we are reminded today that the joy of Christmas is celebrated within the family. Tuwing nagdiriwang po tayo ng Kapaskuhan, ay naiisip natin ang pagdiriwang nito sa loob ng mga pamilya, sa loob ng ating mga community, hindi lamang po ang mga 
pamilya natin, kundi mayroon din tayong mga pamilya sa ating komunidad, pamilya sa ating pamayanan. And in our readings today, we are shown the life of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, the Holy Family. But today, my dear brothers and sisters, I would like to focus on the role of the child within the family. Ang akin pong pagninilay ngayong umaga na ito ay nais ko pong bigyang pansin kung ano ang papel na ginagampanan ng mga bata ng mga anak sa loob ng pamilya. In our gospel reading today, we hear of Jesus being lost in the temple. And His parents, Mary and Joseph, were looking for Him. And so, they went back to the temple. I think, my dear brothers and sisters, this action is significant because it was the boy, Jesus, the child, Jesus, who led Mary and Joseph to the temple. Madalas po kasi ay iniisip natin bilang mga magulang na kayo ang nagdadala sa mga anak ninyo patungo sa templo o sa simbahan. Pero sa kwento ngayong araw, parang baliktad. Yung anak ang nagdala sa kanyang mga magulang patungo sa templo. And Jesus did not just lead them to the temple, but in fact, in the words of the child Jesus, He was trying to explain the temple to Mary and Joseph. He said, Did you not know that I should be in the Father's house? Jesus did not call the temple just the temple. He called it my father's house. It was not the parents who taught the child. It was the child who taught the parents. My dear brothers and sisters, today, let us acknowledge in this story that it was the child Jesus who led Mary and Joseph to the temple, calling it the Father's house. Let this teach us the importance of children within the family that they also can bring us closer to God they can lead us to holiness. Mga magulang, sana po ngayong araw na ito ay bigyang pansin natin ang mga anak at mga bata. Baka kasi madalas akala natin dahil tayo ang mga nakatatanda, kayo ang mga magulang, baka iniisip ninyo palagi na ako ang magdadala sa iyo patungo sa Diyos. O kaya, Ako ang magtuturo sa iyo tungkol sa Diyos. Pero minsan, hindi nyo lang napapansin yung mga anak ninyo ang nagdadala sa inyo patungo sa Diyos. Minsan, yung mga bata pa ang nagtuturo sa atin tungkol sa kabanalan tungkol sa pagiging malapit sa Diyos. We see this also in our first reading today from the book of Samuel. 
when Hannah, together with her husband, Elkanah, were praying in the temple because they have not conceived a child. And when the prayer was answered and they were given their child, Samuel, Hannah went back to the temple because of the child, Samuel. Sinagot ang kanilang panalangin na magkaanak, kaya bumalik sila sa templo para magpasalamat at manalangin sa Diyos. What was the reason why they returned to the temple? The child, Samuel. True enough, it was the child who led them back to God. It was the child Samuel who brought them closer to God. My dear brothers and sisters, today, let us acknowledge the role of children in the family. Para sa mga nanonood sa ating online mass ngayon, kung kayo ay mga anak sa pamilya, kasama na ng mga bata na nandito ngayon, biyaya kayo. Kasi dahil sa inyo, napalapit ang magulang ninyo sa Diyos. Naalala ko po yung kwento ng nanay ko sa akin. At siguro yung mga anak na nandito, o yung mga magulang na nandito, ikwento ninyo sa mga anak ninyo, paano kayo napalapit sa Diyos dahil sa mga anak ninyo. Sabi ng nanay ko sa akin, ako po'y sakitin nung bata. Sabi niya, ikaw ang pinakasakitin sa mga anak ko. No? At dati, no? payat ka. No? Ngayon hindi na. No? Pero dati sabi niya, ikaw ang pinakapayat sa mga anak ko at lagi kang may sakit. Napakahina mong katawan mo. Kaya sabi niya, minsan nagkasakit ka ng matindi. At dahil napakataas ng lagnat mo, ay nagkumbulsyon ka sa lagnat, sabi niya. Alam mo, sabi niya, ang dasal ko sa Diyos na gumaling ka. Nakita niyo na? Dahil sa anak, napapalapit ang magulang sa Diyos. Ilan ko sa inyong mga magulang dito, ang pinagdasal yung mga anak na daladala ninyo ngayon. Dinasal ninyo sa Diyos. Pinagnobena ninyo. Kapag mayroon tayong mga intensyon sa anak natin, gusto ninyong pumasa sa exam, gusto ninyong makapasok sa kolehyo, gusto ninyong makapasa sa exam at sa mga interview sa trabaho, ang mga magulang nagdarasal sa Diyos. Ang mga anak ang nagiging dahilan na makalapit ang mga magulang sa Diyos. Kaya ang mga anak ay tunay ngang biyaya. Dahil sa inyo, mga bata, napapalapit ang matatanda sa mga Diyos. Sa Diyos. Pero baka tanongin ninyo ako, Father, eh yung anak ko pasaway. <laughs> Yung anak ko ay laging sakit sa ulo ko, no? Eh, hindi naman yata ako laging napapalapit sa Diyos kung nakikita ko siya. Lalo yata akong napapalayo. Ito, andito yung mga bata ng tulay ng kabataan, no? Sino ang mga pasaway kaya sa inyo? But let us remember, maybe you remember the story of Saint Monica, And her son, Saint Augustine. Si Santa Monica na palapit siya sa Dios, kasi yung anak niya pasaway. Si San Agustin. Noong bata si San Agustin ay sakit sa ulo ni Santa Monica. Hindi nakikinig sa kanya, hindi sumusunod sa utos ng Dios. At kung ano-anong kalokohan ang ginawa. Kaya ang ginawa ni Santa Monica, ipinagdasal araw-araw 
walang humpay ang kanyang anak na si Agustin para magbago. After so many years of praying for St. Augustine, eventually, St. Augustine converted and later on became one of the greatest saints of the church. So don't worry kung pasaway man ang anak ninyo ngayon. No? Do not worry if your child may not be listening to you or is going astray like Saint Monica, the mother of Saint Augustine. She became closer to God in prayer, praying for the conversion of Augustine. And later on, both of them, mother and child, became closer to God. My dear brothers and sisters, truly, children can lead us to holiness. Children can bring us closer to God. But let me also remind the children within the family of your mission to bring the family closer to God. In our second reading today, from the first letter of St. John, we are reminded that we are children of God. We are called children of God. And this is the reason because as God's children, we believe in Jesus, we love one another, and we keep His commandments. Sana po sa mga anak, sa loob ng mga tahanan natin, sa loob ng mga pamilya, sa loob ng mga pamayanan, huwag nating kalilimutan na ang pagiging mabuting anak ay ang pakikinig kay Jesus at ang pagsunod kay Jesus. Listening to Jesus, following His commandments, can make us true and good children of God. Nakakatuwa pong marinig minsan na talagang ang mga anak ay may ginagawang act role sa loob ng pamilya. Siguro ko sa mga nanonood ng online ngayon, ang nag-ayos niyang pinapanood ninyong online mas ay yung mga anak sa loob ng pamilya. Minsan may nagkukwento sa akin na yung mga anak ang nag-aayos, nagko-connect sa internet para sa online mas, inaayos ang telebisyon, para doon mamnood ang kanilang mga magulang, ang mga lolo at lola sa loob ng tahanan. Baka isipin ng mga anak, maliit na bagay lang naman yan. Inayos ko lang naman yung TV para sa online mass. Pero dahil sa inyo, napapalapit ang inyong mga magulang sa Diyos. Sumama rin naman kayo sa misa. Huwag niyo lang ayusin ang online mass at ang telebisyon o ang computer. Sumama na rin kayo sa pakikinig at pagsama sa banal na misa. Minsan nga po, mayroong batang nagsabi sa akin. Sabi niya, Father, alam niyo po, yung mga magulang ko hindi na nagsisimba. Nako. Sa akin pa nagsumbong yung bata. Sabi niya, ako po kasi gustong gusto kong magsimba. Pero hindi na kami dinadala ng magulang namin sa simbakan. Kapag linggo, inaasikaso na lang nila yung mga kaibigan nila. Pero gustong gusto ko naming magsimba mga anak at mga bata. Pero yung magulang namin... Ayaw magsimba. Mga anak, kung ganyan man ang sitwasyon sa loob ng tahanan, ipagdasal nyo ang inyong mga magulang. Baka kailangan nila ng inyong dasal. At minsan, ayain din silang magsimba. 
baka baliktad na rin ngayon. Baka ang anak na ang hihila sa mga magulang para magsimba. Totoo ngang ang mga anak ay biyaya ng Diyos dahil sila ang nagiging dahilan mapalapit ang mga magulang at ang buong pamilya sa Diyos. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, as Jesus led Mary and Joseph to the temple, teaching them about the Father's house, let us appreciate and thank God for the blessing of children in the families because of the children we become closer to God. We become closer to holiness. Amen. Please all stand. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The family of Nazareth inspires us to imitate the virtues of holiness and piety. With this ideal before us, we ask the Lord to hear our prayers on this family day. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the family of the church, that we may give respect and dignity to all God's children. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family of people and nations, that the rights of the old and the young will be upheld for the sake of peace, justice, and harmony. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families, that those separated from their family circle will find a home with God's people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For broken families, that God's reconciling forgiveness will be granted and accepted to restore all relationships of love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and all the departed, that they may be gathered into the eternal joy of their heavenly home. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, let us now pray for our personal intentions and for all the intentions offered in this Mass. Father in heaven, by subjecting himself to Mary and Joseph, your son sanctified home life at Nazareth. As we offer our prayers, help us to follow his example, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and Saint Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in Him God made visible, we may be caught up through Him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As children of God in Christ Jesus, let us now call on God as our Father.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We would like to thank all of you who have joined us in this celebration, especially the families who are here celebrating with us this Thanksgiving, this Eucharist. And we also would like to thank all of you who have been joining us in this celebration through the online broadcast of this Mass. We pray that this day may truly be a day of the family and we may bring each other closer to God, closer to holiness. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads for the blessing of the family. Almighty God, grant that our families may be places of communion and prayer May families never again experience violence, rejection, and division. And may all who have been hurt find comfort and healing in you. And make all families a place of sacredness and beauty in God's plan. We ask all of these through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Maligayang Pasko po sa ating lahat.